Can you guys hear me now? Better? Sound better? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I think I was on mute that whole time. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, you got six minutes of me moving my lips. All right, cool. We can be heard now. Thanks, Beige, for letting me know. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's get. Let's start this over again. First, I'm the Moderate Texan. This is the Moderate Texan podcast. My name is Jay. Whew. Interesting bit of information. Yeah, that was a six-minute intro or seven-minute intro of just lo-fi music. What's up, Matt? Good to see you, man. All right. Let's let's jump into some information. So first, if you guys haven't, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what's going on. Talk with me. Chat with me. Let me know what you want me to pray for. Remember, all my links are down below. My Twitter, my Apple Podcasts, my uh, Spotify, and my Google Podcasts. All that's there. Love to hear from you guys. Um I wish I could rap to uh, Godzilla uh, by Eminem, but I am not Eminem and I'm not a rapper. I am a drummer, though. I can do that. Uh, but let's get back to what I was talking about, which was the quick side segment, which hopefully this goes pretty quick now. Uh, the quick side segment, now that I've done it twice for you guys, just on mute, um, is about Sidney Poitier. Um, Sidney Poitier is one of my favorite actors of all time. He's a classical actor and I love classical actors. Sir Anthony Hopkins, Dame Judi Dench, uh, uh, Sir Ian McKellen, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, I, I love classical actors. They bring a, an air and a presence about them that is quite frankly unmatched. Sidney Poitier is one of those actors. In fact, he's probably the first black actor that I got to see. Now, I'm not one who likes to bring race into things, so I'm going to amend that. He's one of my favorite actors ever. Period. Not black, not white, not Latino, not straight up favorite actor, one of them of all time. I don't think there would be a Denzel Washington. There wouldn't be a Will Smith. There does, there's not a Chadwick Boseman. There's not this excellence that you see by some actors that are that are black today in 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 Hollywood, that you don't see that without Sidney Poitier. He's an iconic actor that that not only had great skill, but he also had great command, not only on stage and in plays and in movies, but just in person. You knew when Sidney Poitier walked into a room. His personality shined through in everything that he did. Earlier this year, Sidney Poitier died. He, he passed away, I believe it was January 6th of this year. And I literally cried real tears. Tears of not joy, honestly. Um, but they were tears, to, to say the least. And I think his death has been overshadowed by a lot of actors, by a lot of other people, a lot of other famous people who have died. And... For a man who's in the black community, who didn't have a lot of issues, who didn't have any drama in their lives and who put out excellent work, that's that's something that, that we're missing. That's a bit of a legend that we're missing. But why am I bringing up um, Sidney Poitier? Why is he being brought up now? Well, he, Oprah Winfrey did something that's pretty cool. And I, I, I don't watch Oprah. I know my mom used to all them years ago, but I don't really watch uh, Oprah Winfrey that much anymore. But she put out a new documentary that's available on Apple TV Plus. I highly recommend you guys go watch it called Sydney. It goes over his life. And I highly recommend you watch it. Go learn about Sydney Portier. Go watch his movies. I watched one recently, Lilies of the Field. My dad. Uh, apparently, as a kid, grew up watching this, and I didn't even know about it. But when I saw it, it was a great movie. It showed how good of an actor Sidney Poitier is. Highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. But that's been a quick side note. And let's get on, because, you know, there is Thursday Night Football, and is there World Series stuff happening tonight? I 
think there might be. Let me check real quick. If there isn't, let me know in the chat. But if there is, let me see here. I don't want to let y'all down if that's the case. It doesn't look like there is tonight. It's tomorrow. Okay. All right. So World Series is tomorrow, but there is Thursday night football tonight. Will there be touchdowns? Yes or no? Let me know in the chat. Um, but let's jump into this. Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. And we're going to look at some plays, but today's going to be a little different. I want to let y'all know that we're not going to look at plays the same way that we have been in the past. Normally, we, you know, we look at a particular play and then we kind of move ahead to the next one. We're going to do that for some plays, but I want to show y'all an entire drive. Thank you, Matt, for that, reiterating that for me. Thank you. I need that. I need that. All right. So let's start with this first play. One thing I want y'all to know is I really kind of focus on the offense this 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 game um, because they they did what they haven't done all year. They showed up and they played competently. That is what we've been looking for from the Houston Texans offense. For the first five games of the season, the Texans offense was lackluster, except for maybe the first three quarters of the Colts game and Damian Pierce, right? They really haven't played that well. But this game, the offense brought it together. And there's a theme that I want you guys to see, but let's look at this first play. All right, so on this first play, let's let's kind of look at what the defense is showing here. This looks like cover two man. How do I know this looks like cover two man? Well, the safeties are up top here. Man coverage, man coverage, man coverage. This guy is, is on the tight end or the running back here, whichever one. And there's also something else that's happening here. There's some max protect. One, two, three, four, five, six offensive line linemen are here. Oh, snap, we got Alpha in the building. Which, how you doing, my guy? How you doing? Good to see you. Um, so again, I we got six here, six here on the line. We've got four eligible receivers, maybe five if this guy is a tight end, and we've got cover two. That's what Davis Mills is seeing pre-snap. And keep in mind, he is also in the shotgun. So the shotgun is only used so that you can, you know, kind of read the entire field. That's what's happening here. So Let's go ahead and move on and see what we see. All right. This ball is out quick. And we can see in this play that it goes to Cooks. This is Brandon Cooks here. He runs a nice little quick slant to the inside for about 12 yards. Why is that significant? Well, two reasons. One, Davis Mills got the ball out quick. And he got the ball out decisively. Nice little two-step drop there. He plants. He gets the ball out. That's what we've been wanting to see. We've been wanting him to see him make those decisions. He didn't have to scan the field here. His first read was open. The, the Raiders just let it happen. And the protection was good. Like, nobody's close. What else is interesting about this play is that there was a blitz coming. You might not see it, but check this man right here. He kind of ekes in a bit. He's coming fast, but the ball doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And here's something that we really haven't seen Davis Mills do on plays like this. What he normally doesn't do is he doesn't throw towards the blitz. He's afraid to do that normally, but here he does it. And that's what you see good quarterbacks doing. They throw towards the blitz. Now, I will say this. Earlier in the game, he wasn't doing that. And all throughout the game, he wasn't doing that. But on this play, in this play alone, he did that, right? And he did that a couple of times in this game. These are the kind of throws you want to see from Davis Mills. Him hitting his hot, hot, his hot route. Him throwing towards the blitz. Him doing the things that we see the the good veteran quarterbacks doing in this league that's the growth that we're looking for and that's what we've been missing that's what he ended the year like making these decisions for the last several weeks i've been saying this and i know jordan for those of you who don't follow texans thoughts jordan is texans thoughts but for those of you who follow jordan you know that he's been saying that his decision making davis mills's decision making is not 
been the best. He seems like he, he's just a tick slow all the time. I would further that and say that it's not that he's a tick slow. It's that he, he needs to be ramped up. Davis Mills does not play good when you slow the clock down. If you go back and watch this game, if you guys have NFL Plus, go back and watch it and look at the play clock. When the play clock is at 15 or higher and Davis Mills is throwing the ball, you'll notice that the ball looks better. You know that the, the offense moves better, even on the run. And when the play clock is lower than 10, you'll notice that the offense tends to sputter. Davis Mills is good when he has repetition. I disagree. He 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 actually made the right reads quite a bit in this game. I would say about 90% of the time he makes the right read in this game. Um, but it's not that he's he's making the wrong reads, Alpha. It's that he's he's not he wants to play fast. He wants to not have to think as much. And that's when he's at his best. He's he's at his best when he can get in a rhythm. Here, I'll give you guys a good example. Uh I play pool sometimes, right? I, I shoot pool sometimes. And when I do shoot pool, I am terrible when I first start. I'm absolutely garbage. But when I get going, when I can make shot after shot after shot, I hit them in a row. Now, if you looked at me as a professional pool player and you saw me being, you know, missing simple shots at the beginning of the game, You'd be like, this guy is terrible. But then you watch me five minutes in as I'm making shot after shot after shot after shot after shot and running the table. When I don't have to stop and think about it, I can just go and walk around the table and make the next shot. I play better. That's how Davis Mills is. He needs not only repetition, but he needs to get going. He needs to not stop. When you slow him down, it causes him to stutter, for lack of a, a better term. Well, let's get to this next play. Uh, I want to go ahead and get here. So this play, in my opinion, is, is not only great throwing and great execution, but it's it's a great play call. And it's almost executed poorly, actually. It's the touchdown to Chris Moore. Something that we, as Texans fans, were like, what in the world? A touchdown this early in the game? What? Look at that. Great play call. The rub route that's run by Nico Collins here to take both of these men out of the play. Excellent. The, the protection. Mills throwing this when he's got a man on him, a man in his face. He makes the right read. He could throw this to Cooks here because Cooks is also open. But why? This is his first read. He's probably reading right to left here. Look at that. It's a little behind. It could have been out here. We don't know how all this is supposed to be run. But look at it. Look at how well this is executed by the offense. And it's an easy touchdown. This isn't something that's hard. Here, look. This is also what looks to be cover two, but you have this safety coming down. You have several people on the line here. This looks like a blitz. And it's diagnosed and caught. What's also interesting is, again, Remember that last play? This is in the same drive. One, two, three, four, five, six people on the line. That, my friends, is what we call, well, near max protect. It's an overloaded line. The Texans use this a lot. And we'll go over why this is significant later. But this drive, this throw, this, this route, how this concept worked, excellent. Excellent. It gets us seven. Gets Chris Moore back in the end zone again. All right, let's get to the third play here. I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time. 22. All right, all right, all right. All right. So let's look at this play. Now, straight off the bat, again, we've got cover two. Right? One, two, three, four, right here. Five, six, seven in the box. Uh, this guy might be going across, but it looks like it's zone. Looks kind of like man, but this guy isn't following Brevin across. And Brevin gets here. So now we have max protect. Why do I call this max protect? Well, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people are there in what appears to be blocking. 
the Raiders have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in the box and another guy eking down here. You see that? Man here, man here. Or it appears to be man and man, right? It's at least more press coverage because they're real close. Why is this significant? Well, let's play it and find out. Oh, looky here. What a good run. Pierce makes a run here for, what, 15 yards? Great patience here to follow his blocks. No, he gets 20 yards downfield, yo. That's insane. He gets 20 yards down the field because of great patience. Because the line is essentially in max protect because everybody's blocking. They're holding their lanes. They're holding their people up. And he just finds the holes and runs them. That's what we're looking for. This, this evolution of Pierce is good, right? But I want you to keep a lookout for this play because there's a whole lot more I want you to see. So let's get to the next play real quick. Almost there. Too far, too far. So this is where things are going to take a little bit of a difference here. I, I want you guys to understand that I'm not trying to take up all your time. But this whole drive is what the offense needs to continue to do. And I want you guys to understand why I love it so much. When I was watching this drive, I was thinking, man, Damian Pierce is a hoss. But there's a whole different level that's going on here. So again, we look. Single high coverage. One, two, three, four, five, six people on the line. How many people are in the box? Got one on the extended box here, so we'll count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people in the extended box here. Eight in the box. Is this a run? Is this a throw? Well, it looks like it's a run, right? Because look, we've got Hairston in, we've got two wide receivers. This has got to be a run, right? Let's see. Is it a run? It is. Hey, what do you know? It gets five yards. Good play. Good play. Let's let's watch it one more time. We saw eight in the box. Pierce doesn't care. Eight in the box is not enough. You, you need nine, ten. You need all 11 in the box. That's what really matters here. But it's a good read. And it's a good run. Max Protect really helps there because you have, you know, seven on four up front or seven on five. And then it allows them to get through. OJ Howard here in good blocking. Hairston here in good blocking. Look at that. Opens up like the Red Sea. Good run. Good run. Oh, look again. Single high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the box. One here. It's it's one, oh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six on the line. This guy's here. This guy's close. Damian Pierce is in the backfield all by himself. Run, pass, what do you guys think? Looks like a run to me. Let's take a look. Oh, it's man coverage. It's a run. It's a pitch. Oh, it doesn't get as far. It doesn't get as far. Well, they did have nine in the box, right? They had nine in the box, so we kind of expected that. It's it's nine there. They they were They were ready for the run. We just didn't have enough people on that side. It is what it is. All right, we could see it from this angle as well. You can kind of tell Nico's here. He's going to block. They're, they've overloaded this side. Yeah, there's 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 not much space. It's, he's good to get three, two, three yards there. Oh, but this is the next play. Single high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the box again. This guy's here. This guy's here. We've got one, two, three. Four, five, six here, and Brevin coming out. They're selling out for this run. Why? Because the last two plays have been run, and we're continuing to look like we're in max protect. Brevin's here on the line. Possibly here at Chip, maybe? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Nope, no Chip. Ball gets out quick. And look. Akins gets 40 yards down the field. Look at this. We're here on the, what, the 20, 25? 
he ends up on the 45 or the 40 of the other team, right? On the, the, the Raiders 40 here. Look at that play. The reason this is working so well is because we're setting things up. This max protect has been putting the Raiders in a tizzy the whole time. They have been expecting the run. And honestly, Damian Pierce was running all over him. They couldn't stop him. He ran through him earlier for 18 yards. He ran through him again for five yards. He ran through him again for three yards. They're just getting gashed. They don't want to continue to have that happen. So they sell out to stop it. And they can't. We pick it up and we get a huge gain from it. Let's see how this is set up. You see seven on the line here. Aikens doesn't block. He goes out. He doesn't chip. He just goes. And that gets him wide open. There's nobody to account for him because they're all in the box rushing. Let's look again. Another play. Two wide receivers. You're running back Damian Pierce back here. Davis Mills. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My bad. There's seven on the line. We have Max Protect again. In the box, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with the guy that seems to be coming down a bit. And this safety might come down. We'll see. Is this a run or a pass? If you guys are in the chat and watching, let me know. Is this a run or a pass? What do you guys think? We've seen two runs and one pass. Which one do you think it is? I don't know right now. For me, I would think it's a run. Based upon the receivers we have on the field, it doesn't look like this would be a pass. Let's see. Let's take a look. Oh, they're coming down. Nope. Davis Mills rolls out. Hits Philip Dorsett. And that's the right read. Let's use this callback to Alpha here. Is he? He's not making the right reads? He did make the right read. Cooks is not the right read here. Dorsett, who has been criminally underused here, puts this guy on the ground, breaks his ankles, and gets the ball 20 yards down the field. This max protect is working. Why? One, because Damian Pierce takes that man out of the out of the game, but two, because he's making the right reads. Let's look at it from this angle. Davis Mills takes the snap. He does the fake handoff, which is kind of terrible. He rolls out. He keeps his eyes down the field, and he keeps himself in a way that he can be set. Beautiful. Beautiful play. That's what we want to see. Let's look at this next one. Whoop. Let me get to... Let me Let me pause it here. Let's look at this next play here. So this next play, again, one, two, three, four, five, six on the line. Maybe seven might be missing. One, two, three, four, five, six on the line. Yeah, we got six on the line. Troy Hairston in the back with Damian Pierce, Cooks, and it looks like Dorsett are out. This might be the time that Nico already was hurt. So look, look at this. Great stuff going on here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the box. Looks like, man, this guy's creeping down. So single high. Single high safety, man, run stopping. Troy Hairston makes you think it's a run. But is it a run or is it a pass? Do the Raiders know? Do I know? I watched this film several times and I kind of don't remember what this is. So let's take a look. Let's see what happens here. Man coming down, man coming down. Oh, it's a run. Oh, and he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. So the, the Raiders guessed right. It's a run. It was a run this time. And they were able to, to get there. Could they, uh, Damian Pierce have made it further? No, I think he did the right thing by dropping where he was. Good play. Good play by the Raiders. And look, this is the first time this, this drive that we just have our normal line, bunch set, Nico by himself. They've... Got wide stance here on the line, on their line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're in a base four, three, cover two. Maybe man. This might be zone with how far they are. It kind of looks like they're going to be in Tampa two here. Let's see what happens. What kind of play happens here? This looks like it could possibly be a pass, but we'll see. It's a pass. It's a pass to Rex Burkhead. Uh, that was kind of fast. Let's see if there was anything else that was open. 
yeah, he could have thrown it up the middle to Brevin, but I don't know if he trusts Brevin that much this game. Brevin had made at this point two uh, mistakes, two bad mistakes, actually. So I don't know if he trusts Brevin here. So we get that play works decently, but here we are. Here's the next play. Same look. This is the same look. Single high, one, uh, one, two, three, four wide, one, two, three here in the box. This guy looks like he could possibly be coming down, although he's got Cooks. Mm, he's got Akins, but he looks like he's going to be coming down too. And this guy is clearly on Nico Collins. So what do we think is going to happen here? Let's see. Oh, this is actually the right read. Not making the right reads. This is actually the right read here. Brevin's open. Oh, geez, I went back. That's my bad. Brevin's open here. Let's watch that one more time so you can kind of see. Brevin's open. He's open right now. Cooks has cleared this guy out. They have to respect him. He's open. But he can't throw this in front of Brevin because there's a man right here. So he has to throw it about right here. But this is Brevin's mistake, and this is actually the time when he makes his second mistake. Brevin does not stop running. This is NFL-level thinking that has to go in here. Brevin doesn't stop running. If he stops running, the ball hits him. If he keeps going, the ball is behind him, like we see here. And that's the problem that we're kind of seeing. Again, it's the right read. Mills has to throw this away from that guy because if he doesn't, this linebacker here is right in the way. Look, he has to throw it over there. That's the right read. But Brevin does not know how to stop and sit. Because of that, this drive ends in a field goal. But I wanted y'all to see that drive, we use max protect to our advantage. It allowed us to push the ball down the field. And keep the Raiders in a tizzy. Throughout the game, that was actually a theme. You didn't know at any point which one was a run or which one was a pass. And when the Raiders guessed wrong, we gashed them up in the passing game. It's actually how Philip Dorsett gets his touchdown later. But let's look a little bit later in this game. Let's see what's going on. All right, let's get to the defense. Now, I don't like to speak ill of the cut or the dead, but I want y'all to understand why I was kind of excited to see that Kamu Grugier Hill is no longer going to be a linebacker in our defense. It's the right. Okay, good. We're in the right time. All right, so let's take a look. What are we seeing here from the Raiders' defense? And yeah, hey, hey Italo, it's good to see you, man. Italo, it's good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching all my videos. Yeah, Mills did uh, quite a bit better in this game. And I said that at the beginning, but yeah, he does very well in this game. One of the things that I really think he did well is he made the right decisions. I would say on a 90% clip in this game. Highly agree. Uh, as always, uh, before I move on, if you guys have any questions or concerns or anything that you want me to bring up or, or look or, or kind of talk about, put those in the chat. I'll get to them at the end. So let's let's see here. After we kind of go through these plays. So let's look at this defense. It looks like we have single high, uh, four on the line, single high man. Eric Murray's in on this because Petrie, I believe, was hurt after he got crunched up in a bad play earlier in the game. So let's see what's going on here. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six on the line. Similar to what I've been saying the Texans have been doing. Max, almost max protect. Interesting. Now, here's my issue with this play. I'm going to go back, and I want you guys to note number 51, Kamru Grugier Hill. Now, everybody on this play gets faked out. Everybody is, besides Rasheem Green and Derek Stingley, are inside the hash. They're all the way over. So this is everybody got faked, right? Nobody is off the hook here. Hollins runs out. But Kamu Grugier Hill, you cannot expect Rasheem Green 
to set the edge. You can't expect that. What you are supposed to do is make the right play. Do your job. The pursuit of the quarterback at this time is already handled by Rasheem Green. Why are you running towards the quarterback? Why did you not take a look back? What's going on here? And this has been the, to the detriment of the linebacker play. Instead of doing your job, leaving Roy Lopez, the big man on campus, instead of leaving him to run after Mac Hollins over here, why are you not doing that? Why are you not going to take that throwing lane away? That is what we've been seeing, the bad play. This is what we've been complaining about. This play, this style of play from Kamri Grugier Hill. And while I understand this is his job and I don't wish, I don't want to reach into anybody's bag of money and, and take out, you've got to play better, KGH. Whatever team you go to, do your job. I want to see you succeed, King. Do your job. Hopefully the system is not as hard for you as it is here. That's what I'll say about that. All right. Let's move forward to the last play, and then we will jump into final thoughts and kind of do a recap of, of what I saw. This last play here. All right. Let's get there. All right, so this play is the play that was probably the worst in the game. So let's see what we've got here. Again, got these two safeties kind of deep, cover two. You've got these two guys here kind of far off. It looks like how our defense kind of starts, right? We've got this guy here. looks like cover two man or what could turn into Tampa two, a four, two, five, right? We've got four on the line. We've got two linebackers, five DBs, two safeties, three corners. You guys know the drill. So let's take a look. Let's see what let's that's what Mills is seeing again. Like I said earlier in the video, he's in the shotgun and the shotgun allows him to see the entire field, to diagnose more and to know what his reads should be. So let's take a look at what happens here. All right. And it's picked. Pick six. We know what happened. We're down by 11 at this point, and this made us go down by 19 or 18. We were down by 10. This made us go down by 18. <sighs> it was a mistake. It was a poorly thrown ball. Or was it? I wanted to talk this over with Jordan, but he wasn't available. But I did talk it over with some of my other buddies. And one thing I noticed, again, is what I mentioned earlier. I told you guys Brevin is not good at stopping and sitting. He kind of just keeps running. And that may work in college where he was good. But in the NFL, that's not going to work. Safeties break on the ball faster. Everyone is elite. And if Brevin stops here, look, Mills is already throwing this ball. If Brevin stops here, this is an incomplete pass only. It may be caught for a first down. But Brevin doesn't stop. He continues to float back and lets the ball come to him. He doesn't feel the pressure at all. Now, on the other side, Moore is also open, and he probably could have thrown this, but this is the best throwing lane that he's got. And he's, and when you look at it, this, is, this read is open. He makes the right play. He could have thrown this down here as well, but and, and this is first down, so it's not like it's he had to get all the yards. But this is the right read to make. Brevin makes the mistake that he continues to make and he has to get better with. He does not sit. And yes, Mills does make the mistake of staring down Brevin. But I only got to attribute 10% of this here because when he makes this throw, Brevin is still moving back. Brevin has to stop. He has to understand there's a safety there. He was just looking at him. He knows he's there. He sees him break. Watch. Let's watch this one more time. He's outside. Then he turns his head. He knows his safety's here, or he should, unless he's just not paying attention. The safety is here. The safety breaks, but the ball's already out. If Brevin stops, this is a catch and tackle. Or an incomplete pass, PBU. But because Brevin keeps going, that's the mistake that I want you to stop. If Brevin, Brevin Jordan, if you're watching this at all, I don't hate you, my guy. Again, I, I think you're really good at your job. Something that I can't do. 
uh, are much too big, uh, much too out of shape for this. But my guy, Brevin, you have to be better. Know when to stop in space. Know when to keep going and know when the pressure is coming. Because right here, you cost us six because you didn't stop. <sighs> we lost. It was a good game for the first three quarters, at least. The offense moved the ball. We got to see some good stuff from Dare at the end. Dare, I'm, I'm, I can't say his last name, so I'm not going to try. I don't want to butcher it because my man played excellent. But we got to see some stuff that was not Rex Burkhead. And hopefully Dare gets RB2 snaps going forward. Let's look at the, let's kind of wrap this, this week up. Let, let's kind of wrap up what we've talked about. So, so far, you, we already know the introduction. You guys know who I am. Like I said, I am Jay, the moderate Texan. This is the moderate Texan podcast you've been listening to. We talked a little bit about myself. Uh, we asked if you needed something to be prayed for. You know, you guys know everything. It's down in the description. We talked a little, about my, a little bit about one of my favorite actors of all time, Sidney Portier, on the quick aside. For those of you guys who didn't see it at the beginning, go check it out. On Apple TV Plus, there's a documentary that's been put out by Oprah. I don't, I'm not a big, the biggest fan of Oprah Winfrey, it's whatever, but Sidney Portier is one of my favorite actors. And I thoroughly believe there would be no Denzel Washington or Denzel, whichever one you want to believe, Will Smith or Chadwick Bozeman without him. Highly believe that. We watched some plays and we saw that there was a, a theme on the offense max protect or six offensive linemen, six blockers was really putting pressure on the Raiders and was really putting pressure on the opposing defense. It allowed our running back to play, which speaking of the running back, Damian Pierce is beyond dog. He doesn't have that dog in him. He's got the whole pack. That man is insane. He makes people miss. He runs through tackles. He's the leading rookie uh, running back. He's in the top 10 and rushing. The man's a beast. Continue to give him the touches. But don't kill him, right? Don't end him. He is our offense. And he is playing. He's the best running back we've had since Arian Foster. Easily. Stingley. Let's, let's get to the other side of the ball with the rookies. Stingley continues to play well. Not only does he continue to play well, there was a stat that I saw on Twitter and, and kind of throughout social media and Reddit as well, where Stingley, in 68% of the time when he was on – uh, uh, um, Devontae Adams, he only allowed two catches for like 22 yards or something like that. That's insane. Two catches for 22 yards on a top five, easily top five receiver in the league. That's what we've been looking for from the number three pick. That's what we've been looking for. Start to let him do that more. Now, a lot of you will look at the stats and say, well, hold on. Devontae Adams had like eight catches for 90 some yards. Well, a lot of those came against the linebackers. And yeah, we'll get to him because I, I do want to talk about him a bit, Talo. Good stuff. The linebackers were not great. KGH and Kirksey routinely got in situations where they lost coverage. And it was not nice. It was pretty ugly. Um it was to the point to where sometimes I was like, Man, what are you doing, Chief? What's going on here? <sighs> but Wallow came in. And Harris played 68% of the snaps. And Harris did got done dirty. He got done did dirty a bit by Devontae Adams some. But he did well. He did better than the tandem of KGH and Kirksey. KGH and, and, and Kirksey, Kirksey were just getting roasted. And while Harris got done did dirty by, by Devontae Adams, he did a lot better than KGH in Kirksey. And he was better in coverage. He's faster. He tried to do too much, though. You, you see, you saw him do that human missile stuff. That's got to stop, Harris. That's got to stop. Wrap up. Tackle. Do your job. Don't try and fly in with that human missile stuff. This game, also, the defense was better. The defense was trash. Normally for the first, as I said, five games, yeah, five games of the season, the defense was our strong suit. 
They weren't allowing points. They weren't, they were, they were keeping us in the game until the fourth quarter at least. And our offense was anemic at best, but this game, our offense was on point. And when the offense needed the defense to make a stop to keep our momentum going, it never happened. And then we get to the end of the game and we get to see no Rex and a healthy, healthy smattering of Dare. Dare Ngunboale, I believe is how you say Ngunboale. I can't say it. It's whatever. I'll try and say it better next week. Dare, you deserve it, man. You draw, You took an entire drive on by yourself, and you looked good doing it. Dare for RB2, for RB2 in the chat, please, because that man deserves it. Dare is a monster. Good stuff. He deserves to be RB2, and I think we would be much better on offense with him. All right. Any questions? Any questions that you guys got for me? Good stuff, Talo. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, Alpha Beige. Hey, y'all. It's my wife, Kelly. Say hi to her. Know that she is the apple of my eye. And then we got my boy Matt in here as well. Good to see all of y'all. If there are no questions, Thursday Night Football is on Amazon Prime. Uh, go watch it. Shout out to Amazon Prime. Jack Ryan, season three is coming. There was a trailer announced. It's coming, y'all. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Remember, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you want me to focus on for the next video or a particular player you guys want me to focus on. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to say Pierce, Stingley, uh, 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 Petrie, Harris. Let me know. Just let me know who you want me to follow, and I, and I got you. As best as I can. The podcast links, they're all down below, just like my, my Twitter. My Twitter's down there, my podcast links, videos, right? Check out my page, check out my channel, see what I've got coming for you. DM me if you guys want, put stuff in the comments. I'm always willing to have a nice discussion and a debate with all of you. It's been fun, y'all, but it's time to go. You guys know how it went. We always look into the darkness. We find a little bit of light. And man, we brought each other right back to the mill. Y'all know I love you. It's been fun. I'm out, y'all. <laughs>